Sox ended their 21 game losing streak last week. And then to celebrate, they fired Pedro Grafal. They flushed him. Let's just flush it. We flushed Pedro. He gone. Their 21, uh, 21 game losing streak matched the American League record with the 1988 uh, Baltimore Orioles. Yes, yes. I think they couldn't fire fire the manager and bring in a new guy like during that historic streak because that, that's just a ridiculous amount of weight to put on. Eventually, it would be decided that Grady, Grady Sizemore would take over, but I think they were just waiting for that streak to end before they would put Pedro out of his misery. It, it, yeah, that makes some sense. some logic there at least, but. Yeah, and, you know, Smitty and I, when we got the news, we were immediately me. speculating that perhaps TLR <clears throat> could come in and serve as the interim manager. But quickly, like, what, hour or two later, we heard that it was well, Grady Sizemore. But but I guess it was before weird. that, <laughs> we had heard about then, like, a weird, like, what would you call it? What did it feel like? Uh like casualties occurred like post Pedro getting fired with. Well, it was strange how the whole, the whole thing unfolded because they fired him Thursday morning. The the press release came out that Pedro would be relieved of his duties, but it kind of started trickling out over the next two hours that your third base coach was fired. Charlie Montoyo was fired, which that, I thought he would be the logical successor, at least in an interim basis to take over for Grafal because he's got managerial experience over 500 games with the Blue Jays and actually has a 500 record over that time, which would, would have been a large improvement over Pedro Grafal's 89 and 190 record as White Sox manager. Yeah, uh, I guess. Yikes! As soon as he got to the 100, 100 <laughs> below 500 record, they had to, they actually had to fire him at that point. Yeah, there was there you had um, to. There was some confusion, though, like just because the, the way it was like that news was coming out before a second press release came out about two hours after the Grafal firing uh, about the bench coach and Montoya and others. So it was strange because, I, you know, I had just assumed Montoya would take over. And there was about a 10 minute span when that news has been reported and the actual press release came out that made me think that, you know, there o- there's only one person with managerial experience in the White Sox organization at that moment. So could it be Tony La Russa that would take over for the team uh, for these last month, this last month and a half? Uh, alas, that that notion was squashed uh, when the the news came came about that Grady Sizemore would be your interim manager. So it was, it was a brief fleeting moment, but I'm sure you've got thoughts about that. But I will I do have a list of my uh, top candidates to replace Grafal or eventually Grady Sizemore for, from an entertainment basis whenever you're ready to get to that. Um, yeah, I mean, um, my thoughts on Grady Sizemore, it's kind of like fine. <laughs> I mean, like I just, it, it to me, it, it uh, doesn't really, it doesn't really matter who no. is going to be the interim manager. I mean, I think, I think you you've got to be happy that he wasn't part of the Royals organization, at least. Yeah, I mean, well, so far we'll see who the next manager is, but um, maybe it'll be maybe the next manager will be um, uh, the uh, Giants. Uh, I mean, the Royals catcher Perez will be a player manager for the uh, White Sox. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that'd be a complicated contract negotiation. <laughs> it would be, but you know. The, that's what Getz is about. He loves a complicated contract. I heard that about him. Does. More rumors about Chris Getz I'm spreading on this show. But, um, I mean, you know, you got to wonder. I think we talked about this when we tried, when we attempted to do this the first time. I mean, did I think you brought this up. Did, did Montoya just jump ship because he didn't have anything to even do with this? Is that why the yeah. news trickled out? Was it, was it, Hey, you're gonna be the interim manager. He's like, I'll just leave. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I just, uh, I'm good. See you later. Yeah. Yeah. Bye bye. I don't need this. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, maybe he's too proud of his 500 record as a, yeah. as a manager throughout his career, and he would definitely not maintain that over these next six, eight weeks. So yeah, it could be. I haven't seen much reporting about that. Um, I haven't delved too deeply into it, but I haven't, I haven't heard much 
talk on sports talk radio necessarily about what, how that all went down. It was very, it was just very confusing, I guess, at the, at the moment on Thursday, at least. Yeah, no, it was, it was weird. Cause usually in the past, I, I feel like when I've read reports about a manager getting fired and the, they usually announced whatever, whatever the other parts of the coaching staff went with them. And yeah. in a lot of cases when it's a miss, who would be re- who would be replacing him? Why, I mean, why did, why two separate announcements hours right. apart? That's why I think your your thinking's correct in that shit. <laughs> okay, he, they didn't have their not ducks only in a row. not only does he not want the job, he, he's he left. He's just like fuck it, I'm <laughs> out. So we got to go to go to Plan B or or do you think? I didn't even think about this. We didn't talk about this uh, uh, last week. Did they offer it to all three of those guys? And they were all just like, never mind. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's speculate. <laughs> that's been speculated. So I don't know. I mean, who, I mean, who fucking knows. I'll tell you what, if I was like a coach in that organization and seeing how things have been run for like the last two years and, or even further <laughs> or back. 43. Than yeah. Yeah. Well, further back than that, but like, like really so, so, so badly, like disgustingly bad over the last three, three plus years. Like, I'd be like, I don't want, I mean, like how they even, I guess Montoya wanted back in probably, but I mean, now he's scar. He's probably tainted. Like it's, or, yeah. I, mean, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, if know. It would, but he's got his resume. I'm not, I'm not worried about, about but, him. He'll be, he'll be all right. I, I guess I did not. I didn't even know Grady Sizemore was in your organization. He was promoted yeah. from major league. His title, job title, was major league coach. I believe. I don't know. I don't know what that means, but uh, he is now your major league manager. He is. No it means he's a coach. previous experience. It means he's a coach in the majors. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I gathered that. I mean, who, again, to the to your point, like who doesn't really matter who's the manager for this season they they made it abundantly clear that he is merely the interim manager so uh, although i mean i guess they're not closing the closing the door to him potentially being the full-time manager is they're implementing a worldwide search chris getz mentioned uh they wanted to look at or- other organizations which would be the opposite way that he was hired himself uh, as he was already part of the White Sox uh, farm system director, he was just promoted to GM. So I guess he wanted to make it a point they weren't going to do it the same way. Uh, he's he also said it was going to be a uniformed, uh, uniformed not manager, uniformed personnel from other yes. teams. So yeah. th- I thought that was curious too. But that got me to speculating. And oh shit! As a, as a podcaster and blogger, I, I'm I'm all here for the entertainment. So. I put together a list of who the top candidates could possibly be to entertain us, to give us content. Uh, and there is no other content generator as good as Tony La Russa. And if he were somehow to return, the return of La Russa Palooza or La Russa Palooza 2, uh, I'd be all for it. I mean, he he basically carried us for most of the beginning of F- when we started podcasting, turned this from a blog into a podcast. I mean, just, just the, the unbelievable way he was hired and stories throughout his two year reign of terror uh, was just tremendous. Just a, a content generating machine. So on that level, it would be awesome to have Tony, La- Tony La Russa to be your 42nd manager. Actually, he'd be your still your 41st cause he already was twice. So, who knows? <laughs> but I thought that'd be great. I don't know if you would be up for that as well. I don't think you I'm, would. I'm up for I'm up for TLR as a interim manager, but not as a go forward manager. So that's I'm what more, I thought. I, and I thought it, it's ridiculous to think he would be hired as the manager. But I thought it was pl- plausible, at least for those ten minutes where yeah. things were in limbo. That he why you know since the manager the interim manager just does not matter for these last this last part of the season. Why not bring in TLR? Yeah, I mean, uh, give us some entertainment value. I mean, I I think for me, if anyone were to come back, I'm 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 for Ozzy, but I don't know where he I don't know where he fits he's, in on your list. He is number two on my oh, okay. illustrious list, so we'll wait for that. Uh, Ozzy, so. Ozzy Guillen would be probably right there as the most entertaining entertaining possible choice that the White Sox could have. Uh, 
uh, he's so goddamn entertaining as as the post game show on the post game show. It would kind of be a, a loss in a way that you wouldn't have him in in that role anymore. So I don't know if he's if he's better served uh, keeping his current role or if if he'd even be interested. I think he is interested in managing again, and I think he would take the job if if Chris Getz offered it to him. It would just it would be awkward. It'd be hilarious. It'd be perfect. Uh, it would be a throwback to some greater times for the White Sox and some some other tumultuous times for the White Sox. Uh, but getting to hear him talk after every game or, and before every game would be a, a gift, a gift to the baseball world. Yeah, I mean, I got to say, I mean, you can't argue with how that team performed defensively on the field. So that's what they really need a vast improvement in. So like, the idea of Ozzy coming back and while years ago I would have frowned upon it, like two managers ago I would have frowned upon it, three managers ago. Now I'm I'm very open to it. I would I would not mind it at all. Well he just he just managed Venezuela to a, a South American championship. I forget what the what the competition was, but he was just a manager this this past summer. So it's not like he's or maybe it was a spring, but um it's not like he's completely out of the loop. You know, he, he, he clearly knows everything going on with the organization and he's been on the bench recently. So I don't, I don't think it's outrageous. Right. Uh, I'm rooting for it. Number three on my list is from a blast from the past. And this would be controversial as fuck. And it would be entertaining as hell to bring Joe Madden back oh, to God. Chicago to the scene of the crime. <laughs> uh, Joe Madden is just a fascinating story and will, will always be. Um, but he's been kind of like removed from baseball. He's like fallen out of favor with with most of the young modern general managers that started with Theo Epstein, uh, Jed Hoyer, and he went to the the Angels and did not last long there. And no. he's just doing a podcast and working with the MLB Network and sounds kind of bitter about every about how his career has turned out and. The craziest thing is you'd think the manager of the Chicago Cubs that finally broke the curse after 108 years would be beloved in the city of Chicago. You'd think he would have statues. You'd think he would, you know, have his have his uh, obligatory steakhouse <laughs> in downtown Chicago. You'd think he would just be the toast of the town, much like Mike Ditka. You know, he's a very uh, proven to be a very mediocre coach that is a, a god in the city of Chicago because of his one Super Bowl championship, where you'd think that that would apply to Joe Madden as well, and it, it clearly does not. And it it didn't from day one after the World Series. People were bitter against him for they th- felt like he almost cost them the World Series. They won in spite of him. So you'd think he'd be kind of uh, excited to kind of kind of relive that or revive that legacy in in the Cubs backyard uh if that was a potential potential for him I think he'd be all for it coming back to Chicago I don't I don't know that the the White Sox would have any interest in Joe Madden necessarily unless things align but I also thought it'd be hilarious to have you know see him revive his antics you know bringing in the petting zoo and the magicians and jugglers and everything else and having White Sox fans having to enjoy that if if the team was winning under the under that scenario, you, you'd have to embrace it. Just, just like Cubs fans did. Uh, you don't have uh, to embrace it. <laughs> well, a lot of Cubs fans did not, but they were winning. So it's like, well, who, who gives a fuck? We're winning hundred games a year. Something's yeah, working. So I guess. Yeah. I don't know that. I, embrace uh, you under- it. Uh, huh? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> what I mean is, you know, I don't know. I'd be like, oh yeah, great. The petting, you know, I don't, I, I'd be like, uh, what I, I just kind of be like, whatever with it, you know, I guess I'd be more like, a lot of yeah, it's working. Okay, fine. Do do your shtick. Seems stupid. So, whatever. I guess as as a diehard Sox fan, would you be totally against Joe Madden taking over the team? Yeah, just because he has the think, Cubs stench on him, or no, or no, of his it weirdness, or it's not the Cubs stench, and it's not even his weirdness. There's something I don't know, something to talk about at least. But I just think baseball's passed him by. Yeah, that's think, a, that's the best argument. And I was I, thinking that too. I don't think he has any interest in going to any team that be um, that. Would, I only think he'd be going to a team where ownership and the front office, which there really isn't anyone anymore, 
is writing it in a way of where they're really interested in all your gut feelings, <laughs> you know, and, and things like that. And, and cause Joe was a, Joe was like, he did do analytics, but, he was he's, a gut guy. Yeah, but he's a gut guy too. And I don't know, his, you know, people will say his gut is what almost cost the Cubs the World Series. And maybe his gut was the reason Tampa Bay never won one. So, um, you yeah, know, I, I, I think a, lot, a different story, but I know. I think a lot of managers, obviously, I, I, a lot of managers, not obviously, but a lot of managers, I think we just don't hear about it. You know, they, everyone's probably making some decisions that aren't purely analytical in the, in the yeah. course of a game. You got a hot bat and he's, he's red hot and hasn't hit this guy. Well, you might put him in the lineup that night just because of how things are going. But yeah, it's, I don't know. It's Joe's the... just been so vocal about how bad baseball is now with the way they run things that I, I kind of think he's tainted himself to any organization. Yeah. Well, and he, he kind of burned bridges, you know, he, clearly the, there was a conflict between the front office and him in Chicago and again in Los Angeles. So that, you know, the, the front offices have a lot more influence over lineups and, and decisions in the dugout than they ever had. And I think Madden was a, a huge opponent of that. And it, he butted heads and it just, it it's kind of kicked him out of the league. So that, that I just think, I think it'd be interesting. I, I don't think it's necessarily plausible, but yeah. I well, definitely would be yeah. out there. I guarantee that, dude. You're right on that. It would be interesting. <laughs> well, I think just just a little bit less interesting, a little bit more plausible would be AJ Prezinski taking over as manager. Uh, yes, this has been uh, this has been heard a lot. It would go against the, what Chris Getz has said uh, about the kind of candidates they're looking for because he is not currently in uniform and he has zero managerial experience, but. AJ would be a fantastic soundbite. Uh, he might be a horrible manager. I don't know. There's so many managers are former catchers. I think I think that's that's where a lot of it comes from. But you know, he's got several jobs now. I'm not sure he needs to needs to give up any of those as, as he's building a podcast empire. He's also broadcasting for Fox uh, MLB on Fox. Um, but you know, just imagine imagine the sound bites before and after games. It'd be very much like Ozzy Gian. I think he's he he tells it like he sees it, uh, which is awesome. Yep. Uh, he's he's a caustic personality. I think he probably doesn't get along with a lot of people. He doesn't seem like a very popular person within the industry in general. He's certainly popular on the South Side and uh, other places he's been. But I'm not I'm not sure how how. How that would work, I think we, it would be fascinating, and I think we we would enjoy every minute of it. I, you know, I think if the Sox were in a different, little different shape, I'd be for AJ. But I feel like they they gotta get someone in with some sort of at least coaching experience on a major league level, you know, yeah. to help get this thing going in the right direction. You know, I do always, I, I laugh at the current state of the Sox too, because I think about Jerry Reinsdorf's comments that the reason Chris Getz was hired and they didn't go outside the organization was because they wanted to compete immediately. And yeah. what a fucking joke that has turned into. Boy, potentially the least competitive team in MLB history. Yes. Which... Well, f- the final candidate on my list, at least, for pure entertainment value would be David Ross. Oh, Rossi, my boy, another return to prodigal son returning to Chicago after he was unceremoniously kicked out uh, of the C- of Cubs organization in favor I'm of Craig Council. He's got he got to have a chip on his shoulder. I'm sure he would love. He, I mean, kind of that's kind of his personality anyway. He would love coming back to the city where he built much of his uh, reputation and had a lot of success. Uh, he is. You are certainly a fan, as you've come to come to his defense on many occasions. Uh, after his unceremoniously unceremonious ex- <laughs> exodus from <laughs> oh, Chicago. Oh, we'll get everybody. Thanks for tuning in, Ryan. Here, you wouldn't believe how much better this first recording was the first time we tried to record this show. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we nailed guys. every every line. You know how we say this show's never scripted? It's almost like it's a little bit scripted tonight because we're trying to recreate yeah. the magic, folks. <laughs> it was magical. You had a margarita. You, I had you a margarita. Had I was in. I was in the the basketball jersey in celebration the of Pedro Sawyer. You were fired up about your rock and roll weekend. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
It's a whole different Pete. So you're throw. I'm going to blame this on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. What, what do you think about David Ross as, I'm all in. as the next I'm manager? All in man, this guy got the 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 fuck fuck the Cubs in how they handled Rossi. He took they fucked team. him. They, they totally fucked him. So why did. wouldn't he say fuck you? Yeah, yeah. He doesn't owe them shit. They they no. he, they he took a team. <laughs> Not that predictions mean anything, but. You look at well, the predictions are based on what, as we like to say, they're going to be good on paper. Well, they were going to be bad on paper, which means that they exceeded every expectation that they came they within could have. one game of making the wild one card. And the team, fucking game. the team that did make the wild card went to the goddamn World Series. So, yeah, it's it's crazy how close the, the Cubs were, and, and they yet they thought they could get that little extra percentage better if they hired Craig Council, which is, eh, it might be a subject uh, later on, but certainly debatable. Yeah, I'd say it's majorly debatable right now, but I mean, we'll see what the end result is, right? That's, the season's not over, and Cubs still, you know, are in uh, hopes of a playoff spot. They just blew their lead. I've got lead. a whole segment about that coming up when we get over to the Cubs, so yeah. I mean, they, they just blew their lead in the, in the, in the Cleveland game, but. Oh, well. I've got it on. I can't see it. Four to it's two three. nothing. Wouldn't I? Yeah, oh, he let a, he let up a homer. Your uh, your ace, Shota Imanaga. Yeah, but anyway, we're talking about the Sox right now. So I, I'm all for Rossi. I'm all for Rossi. So I think uh, I don't think he I don't think he'd be a bad pick. I think he and I think he was getting better, and that's the thing. He was trending upward, and then he got cut off. So you know, if he well, breathed, he blew out his. B- he completely burned out his bullpen and then the yeah, September that's collapse. That, true, true. But that's something he could have learned from and, and adjusted going forward. But yeah, I don't know. He, he's he's certainly beloved on the north side, uh, a great personality. Uh, he's just sitting on a beach somewhere right now, as far as I know, and just weighing his options. Uh, he might have many options actually coming into next season with whatever managerial openings there are, which I'm sure there's going to be plenty. Yeah. So it's hard to say, but I think landing in the south side of Chicago would be hilarious and awesome. I the legitimate, be, what's that? I think I think it would be great. I'm ready. The I'm legitimate ready candidates I've the legitimate candidates I've heard uh, thrown out there: Skip Schumacher, yes, uh, the Marlins manager whose contract is <laughs> ending uh, for sure. Uh, apparently, they neither side wants to return, which the Marlins are kind of a crazy organization. He has ties to Tony La Russa, so that's why his name is coming up there, being with the Cardinals organization previously. So I think that that seems plausible, I guess. But I think he's also the top candidate on the market. Is no one is holding Skip Schumacher accountable for the uh, Marlins losing their entire starting rotation to injury this year, and just being a kind of a fucked up organization. So uh, he was not happy how Kim Eng was released as. President or GM? I forget how that how that I think it may have been worked, both but, actually. Yeah. So uh Kim Ang has actually been mentioned as potentially a president of baseball operations, maybe Chris Getz's boss candidate, but I think that kind of brings us back to a Kenny versus Rick versus Jerry versus Tony situation. So I'm not sure that would lend clarity or give clarity to the White Sox organization. So the other name I heard thrown out there was um Patrick Leland, who's the son of Jim Leland, who's going to come up later in my Tiger segment, but he's either managing your double. A, I think he's managing your double A, Birmingham. That puts him in uniform. To, yeah, yeah, to much success. So, thought that'd be an interesting candidate, but who knows? But I don't know if you had other other candidates you'd be interested in. Uh, just want to make sure it's not someone tied back to the Royals somehow. I would really. Yeah. I think it's a good start. Fresh. I mean, I, you know, I brought it up a few weeks ago, or maybe it was the last podcast that, uh, which was a few weeks ago. Uh, Terry Francona as a mm. as a possible candidate, um, but you know, I like it. But then, is he healthy enough to come back? I mean, he left for health reasons. Do you really want to come back to the game if if, if maybe that was part of your cause? <laughs> I don't know. He's had health issues for, for years. It's, it's not a new thing. I think it just got yeah. to the point where he couldn't do it anymore. And you'd 
you'd think it was pretty serious if he, you know, quit the Guardians. That that was a certainly certainly a good team, uh, certainly a, t- a franchise in a very good situation that he wouldn't just walk away from if he if he could do it. So it'd be kind of surprising if he could come back, but. Uh, he doesn't he have ties to Tony La Russa as well? Isn't that the the connection at least? Or I, I forget how that how his name got. Yeah, out, I but. think I think he was a uh, assistant under him or something at some point. But, yeah, I mean these uh, old guys have worked together for so long, been in the league so long. I'm sure they've all worked together in some some different capacities. So yeah, so I don't know. I don't think that'd be as entertaining as, as my candidates that I threw out there. But no, I think, I think that'd not. be probably probably the best, a really good choice if that was an option.